have three happen, agenda then. items, which are emergency de declaration for a flood event, authorized spending for flood event, and RFP for municipal building and library. Um, are there any other additions or modifications to the agenda? I assume it's going to be all flood all night. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, you heard the agenda. Do you have something else to add? No. Okay. Okay. Um, so, item number one emergency declaration for flood event, handing over to Evan. Wondering if we make a motion on declaring a municipal emergency similar to what we did in July. I think it doesn't do any harm to do it. Hopefully there won't be a need, but... Um, I'll move it. And I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Next item, authorized spending for flood event. If it's needed. So again, similar to July, the ask is, should we authorize any spending um, for any flood related need? I think Jason has something along this line. Okay. Yeah, I was looking for approval to start tomorrow morning at six when NATO's open, start hauling plant mix from their location to our staging area, because they're on winter hours and they close at three. And the roads aren't going to be good enough, solid enough to start getting on until midday. And we're going to need some material for some of the spots that we. The, will that be flood, flood related stuff, you think? Or? Some of the washes by the culverts will be from, yeah. And then I won't have an exact number until we see what's happening after some of the water on one way and over the road. So some is flood related and some is. Mud mitigation. There's going to be, a, I have enough in the stockpile for the mud. You have enough for mud? Okay. Okay. So it'll be a flood? Yeah. Okay. Can we make a generic uh, motion to approve funding as spending as needed rather than setting a dollar amount to it? Cap to it? So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Um, the only thing I'll just say is that, like, I don't think anyone should just spend money, so that's not what I'm implying by any means, but, um, we just do want to be cognizant of cash flow, um, so, and by cash flow I mean because of flood expenses that we haven't yet been reimbursed for, we just want to make sure that that cash on hand will not be problematic, which I don't think it will be at the moment, um, that could be a different story in a month or two um but i don't think so right now so due diligence okay any other discussion gotta do what uh, we gotta do all those in favor Sorry. Uh, aye all right all right have it okay um i'm just gonna pause because we didn't add a generic flood related item but there's a lot of people here are there i just want to open the floor like is there anyone who wants to contribute anything specifically about tonight or tomorrow. Um, thoughts, concerns. Or needs. Or, yeah, from or requests. Fire department, sheriff, yeah. library has representation. Priorities. Here. I'm concerned that the drain is going to fill up with parking pretty quickly. The village green? Yeah, for all, like, the alternative parking. Lots of folks from our building have already used their cars. I haven't, like, done an inventory of the green, but it might be helpful to think of somewhere else. That's helpful. Yeah. There's a green and another spot that was available yeah. too, yeah. right? And oh, sorry. Sorry. I've been sorry. telling my renters to go up to the elementary school, <clears throat> to the parking lot, to the College Hill parking lot on the bottom right. I mean, that's other, other problem areas. But we should contact, we should contact the school. And maybe we should put that on our website tonight. Well, we should get approved. Yeah, we should get. We don't know if there's going to be school tomorrow or not. Was it canceled today? No, they left early. Is there any need from fire department? I mean, <clears throat> no. Um, we 
we have the equipment ready to go. I mean, the station is still under construction, but as far as the buildings, the equipment and the staffing is available. Um, now that you've done your emergency declaration, the EOC would be operating or making decisions, correct? Right. Do you have anything that you desire the fire department to be preparing for or planning to do? I mean, outside of 911 calls. I can't think of anything at this time. I've spent a lot of time talking to Eric Osgood and other people that have experienced floods of this magnitude. And like, granted, everything's different, but I can't think of anything at this time. <clears throat> have you tested the siren since July or know if it works? That that part, that uh, room in the station hasn't even been put back together yet. Okay. Uh, uh, so that, that, is, that is off the table as far as the tool in the toolbox right now, just because it's still displayed. Um, and honestly, we probably won't get to that portion of evaluation and move back in until well after the new year. Gotcha. At least it's no. Can anybody else think anything? And then in your conversations, has the idea of having the fire department go out and talk to people in uh, previously flooded areas, has that come up? Uh, I did talk with Roger about it and Ken and BJ and they were, had recommended it. Uh, at the time I was waiting until this meeting and looking at the models. Um, the engineering firm, whatever they are, if you want the name. SLR. Yeah, that, that one. one. <laughs> so they're not predicting any flooding on River Road West or in the mobile home park, which were the two heavy, heavy ones last time. Um, Jason has talked to the Lenways, who could be stranded. Um, and you went out River Road East to try to communicate with them when uh, Waterman Brook got high. I got in touch with the resident on the end of Hunter Road, who I thought would be stranded, but apparently there's a back way there, so they're, they're all set. Um, if the board wants the fire department to do it, they can. I, I don't see the need for it right now. And it, I'm welcome to recommendations from the fire department too. Hearing all that, I would rather us be proactive than reactive, and especially given the time of year that it is, the thought of people waking up in the middle of the night with freezing cold water coming into their houses and not really having any forewarning in some cases, um, I would at the very least like to give them that forewarning. Um, it's the least that we can do. I'll go around and do it door to door. Uh, it was offered, um, and at the time I opted not to. Um, do we know, I, I mean, I, I called up Fred's today and I said, oh, I want you to come down and secure my propane tanks. And they came down and secured them. They're still on, but they secured them. Do we know, is that happening in the village? Does anybody know whether that's a, going on? I saw them on Railroad Street at a couple of locations. The one, that big tank behind the library. I saw mm -hmm. them working on that one at least. Um, I was that Fred's on, also? That was Fred's. I did see some, um, and I don't know if that's anything to do with the village or not. Or, but I saw Tony Lahulier had a bunch of his pulled up closer to his barn. So I don't know if Suburban, they're obviously thinking about it. Yeah. And I also <laughs> ran out of propane at my house. <laughs> well, I just... He came down to the and here. strapped a big tank to a tree. I mean, it was, so. Are there any other thoughts? We have a board member that wants to. You and I could do it. We could ask the fire department. I don't think I would rather us do it, I guess, at this point. So that they can get rest if they're needed in an emergency, but I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes either. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it carries a different weight coming from the fire department, um, and but who do you think should be notified? I think anybody who's in areas that were flooded before should get a knock on the door. Um, but we know that it's significantly less. We, we don't, don't know, know anything. Yeah. We don't know it below the last forecast. Correct. And that, that model has an asterisk on the bottom that does not have the weight for ice the on it. Like, the, the river at our house is where it was in July. Same kind of thing. Like, we, we don't. Under that 
next step into you for the podcast. So we're an open meeting and we just need one conversation to happen at a time. Will and Brian and Athena, please, one conversation at a time. Just because we're an open meeting and we need to record open meeting discussion. Um, heard you. Did you want to share something, Will? Uh, the only thing we were saying is that the, the crash they anticipated an hour ago um, is not, we're, we're going to exceed that. So the forecast you're seeing for the National Weather Service out of Burlington, um, it's still raining in Wolka. It's about, what, four hours to be here-ish? Four plus. Four plus hours before, when it stops there, before we're going to see a crest here. So. Just for reference, I have the outdated gauge reading. It's always outdated by like an hour. But an outdated gauge reading of 14.74 feet which is a moderate flood, flood level. The peak is forecast at 15.2 feet. And to everybody's point, that peak forecast is set for 7 p.m., I believe. And yeah, 7 p.m. And just based on the trend line of the existing water level, that is not going to just stop and drop. Um, trend line alone, it's not going to just stop and drop. And to your point, we have a bunch of upstream um, lack of data. We don't have upstream data, real data. Right. I was going to ask, did you go to Wolka before you were here, Chris? Or I just called a, a fellow buddy of mine Wolka I was, in Wolka from the parking lot. So. I was talking to oh, I'm sorry. Officer Walter, <laughs> sorry. It's OK. We had, <clears throat> we had people between Wolka and Wisconsin all day. Um, so I had somebody up there about an hour ago, and that's when we got a report about uh, the Elmore Mountain Road with water over the road right at the Wolcott um, Elmore town line. That, at this point, is the only report other than the North Wolcott Road with some water that was starting to approach the road um, for high water stuff. And I think. I included you with some of the photos and video that we had that was yep. earlier this afternoon when we were up there. Yeah, those are the same ones I sent you out here. So is the river over the banks in Wolka? It was not when I was up there this afternoon. It was very, very close, and there was some minor field flooding going on, but the river had not come out of its banks yet. I had talked to the chief of the Wolka Fire Department about half an hour ago. And he said they have closed some roads and the water's still rising. Okay. Um, and the other question I have is snow. I went to Walden. Evan's heard this a few times now, but I went to Walden yesterday, went through Walden yesterday, and there was a lot of snow up there uh, and a lot of snow on Hardwick, and that's all, that's like the far end of our watershed. So I'm just curious is there still a lot of snow on the ground in Wolcott? No. That's good. Eden had a lot of snow. I had a foot and a half of snow on the Yeah. Where, Kim? Eden. Eden. PJ? Uh, I know last time we underestimated it. Uh, last time, the last big storm in July at midnight, that's where it is on my lawn right now. At midnight, when we were supposed to, we were supposed to go down from here. And I'm already there. So just, I'm just afraid of over uh, underestimating. And it wasn't just the last time we like underestimated. It seems like this is a pattern. Like it feels like the Halloween flood seems like it's underestimated. And like, and it's not anyone like on the board's fault. You're doing what you can with the data you have. It sounds like whatever. Like you said, there's a delay. We don't. We don't. Have. The forecasts are close. It's the reality. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. an, an exact science. <laughs> yeah, it's a delicate line to walk. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for. So I sent you guys, uh, the four of us, an email, or had Lydia send it over with something RJ kind of wrote up for a possible handout. Mm -hmm. So that that could be an option to look at, I guess. Um, he left spots blank for us to fill in and we stop at and stuff. So if you were going to do that. Yeah, I'm trying to find it right now. Yeah, it come from just from Lydia. Scan it. At two eighty, uh, two twenty-eight. Did you find it? 
What is your read, RJ? Um, you've experienced quite a few flooding events, and I know they're all unique. Um, we're all just doing the best we can. Looking for your thoughts. Um, I think everybody's points are valid. <clears throat> Given the indicators, um, the event that we're going to see, I would consider it relatively minor. Most of the uh, appropriate actions would be knowledge, that, you know, knowing that this is happening. A lot of appropriate um, decisions would be shelter in place. I don't see the need to move a lot of people. Um, I guess my take on what's happening right now is it would be more of an awareness thing and not an imminent need to um, deploy, make contact, and move. I think it is just more about the knowledge. Um, I agree with everybody. We don't really know what that is going to happen, but there is still some room. I mean, at 15-2, a foot is still... Uh, you know, a foot of error is still acceptable. Three feet of error is going to be a totally different ballgame. So we're right on the, we're walking that fine line. Um, I don't know if you have some standard procedures or standard methods to push out information through your VT alerts or, if, you know, I don't know if there's a program like that where you can do some hourly updates. Um, That's not a bad idea, just use VT alerts. That would be everybody in the encompass area. Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait. Everybody if you put don't have 20 members out there knocking on doors, does it cause more chaos? I don't have the answer to that. Yeah, uh, but causing chaos and panic could be a negative thing. There are, there are some people that don't follow some of the more modern electronic things. I, I understand that. I mean, there might be some people that would get reached by a door to door, but generally speaking, um, I'm not sure it would bring a large benefit right now. Okay. Certainly the you know, the media is certainly putting it out there. Putting it out there. I was gonna say hyping it up, but that was not the right way to phrase it. They're certainly putting it out there. It's so I think if anybody is not aware of it, they'd have to be living on Mars <coughs> at this point. So I, I hear that, Duncan, and I know that there were people during the July flood who, despite all that the media was doing to talk about it leading up to it, calling it a historic flood, you know, a historic event, people did not know it was coming and people were in their homes at 2 a.m. and had flood water coming in. So I, I hear everything that people are saying and I, you know, I just... And is knocking on the door going to change that? It, it may not. And I think in the interest of awareness, getting the information out to them and say, now it's up to you to make, you know, make up your mind on what to do, whether that's putting a go bag together and seeing what happens or finding somewhere to go right now. Um, but getting the inform making sure that the information gets out there and not relying on, you know, some method that it, I'm, I'm connected, right? I, I'm going to check the Facebook and the website and get the VT alerts. Not everybody is going to, and I worry about those people. So I had a conversation with RJ and or whatever about it, and my, my concern was is that we had a mental health crisis last time, and Johnson has a lot of mental health individuals and some handicapped individuals. So that was my concern. But at the same time, a lot of them are still displaced because they're not back where they were. I, so I think you're right about that. Yeah. I could foresee us being cautious about not wanting to do it, but I can also... I was trying to change position earlier, but thinking and looking at it a lot longer, talking to you two, and talking with RJ, I personally feel that we should not put the fear back into everybody unless we find it that's going up within another hour or two. I think we have, I mean, my, my opinion is we haven't seen it close enough to any homes yet. And, and I'm not saying we won't, because I think we probably will. But uh, I tend to agree. Like, I feel like we already are all in the aftermath of a traumatic event. We, like, we had a traumatic event this summer. 
a lot of us spent a lot of our lives in it for a long period of time. And I am concerned for the people who lived through it in their homes. Right now I'm concerned for them. Uh, I share that concern for sure. I'm not sure knocking on their door is going to help with that concern if we're not addressing a need <coughs> that they have, and I'm not sure we are. So I kind of feel like if we think people are in imminent danger, we're going to go check on them. Like that's what we do in terms of public safety anyway. And RJ, please like check me if I'm wrong in any way, but I, I feel like that's kind of the way it plays out. Yeah, through a lot of coordination and a lot of reliance on the sheriff's department, a lot of those high hazard areas are checked. And we, we look at a lot of the same landmarks to try to gain information. That's different than saying we have a problem that we're facing and we deploy our resources and the highway resources and we put 30 people out there. Right. That's a totally different thing. But throughout the afternoon and even throughout the evening, you know, at any point in time, there's probably two or three different sets of eyes on patrol around. I've um, got, we've got um, three folks out right now that are just out checking the hot spots, you know, the areas that typically flood, and we're going to continue to do that until we don't need to do it anymore. And if the Sheriff's Department needs to call in more resources, then we'll call in more resources. That last flood, how long did it take before you guys realized, okay, this isn't what the weather people said and it's going to be this level and, oh shit, we're screwed? Well, they had a 11 o'clock peak and the 11 o'clock peak hit and it was above what that 11 o'clock peak was and the line was literally straight up. So that was the we're in trouble moment and we had no clue at that moment how long it was going to rise, like how, what the duration of rise was going to be. We had no idea. Uh, so the only reason I asked this is lot, and I'll just like finish yeah. that thought. While this is not a flattening curve, by the way, I, I like study these graphs to a ridiculous extent, but this, while this is not a flattening curve, it's also not still straight up, which is good that it's not straight up. It is starting to curve a little bit, um, which means that it could take a sharper curve at any time. We just don't know <coughs> what time is going to be. That's my interpretation. And with that same question, uh, so with it starting to curve, it could also... It could shoot up. Would again. Go through. And the only reason I say this is because if we look at what we did last time, okay, then you're at midnight. Now let's try to alert people. So we could, we got two ways. We can even alert them earlier and not like put out flyers like we are kind of talking about earlier. Say, hey, there is a high flood water potential, just kind of like, here's a heads up, and if you get to that point, here's some, uh, like RJ's paper there. Or we can wait and then look back on it and say, shit, we should have done it earlier when it was still in the movement upward because there wasn't a, a curve showing that. I mean, it's just, I'm kind of on his end because I, and it could be because I was in the flood too, <coughs> and I'm at that point of almost hitting my house and it never gets this close, even as close as it's got right now. So I'm, I don't know, I guess, I get safer it. than sorry type deal. Um, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, one, I understand, I'm sorry, Shane, I understand what you're saying, and there is value to having the knowledge out there. Um, and as a fire department, we will do as EOC has asked us to do. Um, but having said that, that's why we asked this meeting to happen at 5 o'clock this afternoon instead of 6 30, so that we could be out knocking on doors at 6 o'clock instead of 8 9 o'clock at night. And we chose not. Go ahead, Brian. I think, you know, I think if we get a hold of one family in the village that they know, or maybe looked at 11 o'clock and they're like, oh, we're hitting 14 feet, no big deal. There was 11 o'clock feet this morning, you know, and so now it's, you know, they're thinking it's not going to happen. If we just 
And I, I think opposite of what you think, Ken, in terms of inciting panic, I think it would incite uh, comfort to know that our village and our um, folks directing the EEOC are on top of it this time around because we, we weren't last time. You know, we walked out of that last meeting and didn't notify anybody. And I was on Railroad Street all night, and there are people waking up, and it's not fun. So it wasn't good. It, it felt to me like I should have knocked on the neighbor's door because I was at the library. And I wish I had. Um, so I think if we reached one family, we were like, because the resources to save one family by boat are quite a bit bigger than walking to a couple houses. The risk to the rescue is higher. Yeah, the risk, exactly. Thank you, Will. The risk to the rescue is higher later on, you know, at two in the morning than it is at eight o'clock tonight or seven o'clock. Understood. Uh, there was notification that went out in the form of a pamphlet last time to the outlying uh, high infected areas. And it's not an exact science, right? right? But I can tell you the tremendous amount of hours on the EOC side leading up to the storm, looking at different models, getting in touch with the National Weather Service, um, talking with SDL or whatever about their flood model and everything. It's tremendously more because we all learned from the last event and experience. Um, I hear what you're saying. I'm just trying to say like we're at five point one right now. Just forecasted a couple hours ago, or fifteen point one right now. Forecasted just a few hours ago, fifteen point two, and now we're going to crest. But it's going to happen past midnight. You know, I don't. We can't. We're going to throw that number out the door. But 15.2, as far as affected structures, again, what, what's the map we want to do? Do we want to plan for 21 feet? I don't think so. I don't see that happening. I don't think people are already panicked. Like, and, and no, we don't want to incite more, confirm that. I don't know about you, but like every, every time the river rises like two or three feet, my heart races. Like mm -hmm. we're 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 already there. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I like the VT alerts idea. I can call WLDB and have them do an announcement as well for anybody that's not on VT alerts. Um, you guys haven't said much. One of the things that perplexes me about this is. It seems like there ought to be a stake in Wilkin. <coughs> in the ground, that when the water gets there, somebody in Wilkin calls us up and says, guess what? We have a gift that's coming to Johnson. And we should know that if it reaches the stake in Wilkin, Johnson is going to have 20 feet or 18 feet. Or th you know, that's, that's what I want to see set up in this valley. Because there should be a gauge of Right, there should be a gauge up there, and if there isn't a gauge, we should create one somehow with with our community partners, so mm -hmm. that when when Hardwick, when the lower village of Hardwick is underwater, mm -hmm. Wolkett knows it's coming, and Wolkett tells Morrisville, and Morrisville tells us, because we, in reality, I would like to think that we have, RJ, would you say we have five or six hours from Wolkett? Yeah, generally speaking. Yeah. So if Wolkett is, if you guys have officers stranded in Wolkett like you did this summer, we should really be on it. And that, that to me is a thing that we need to put in place for this. And Duncan, you mentioned Can that? you mention it to LCPC? There's a meeting coming up. Yeah, there's a meeting coming up. <laughs> yep. So for tonight, what do we need to act on tonight? Duncan, do you have any thoughts? One of the concerns I have about notifying people is <clears throat> when we notified them before, we had an emergency shelter open and they, they had an option of a place to go. We don't right now, and I don't think we're planning on opening an emergency shelter. At least I haven't heard that conversation. Um, so if we go knock on doors, their options are they get made aware of the fact that the water's coming up, which I kind of got to believe they already are aware of that. Um, and short of that, if they decide to leave town, 
you know, I guess I can go spend the night with a family or a relative or something like that. But <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not opposed to the idea of providing notice to people, but I, I'm not sure how much value there would be in it. Did you have a question, or do you need to build one? Question and some information. Did you go out to Rocky or Schwimmer Bridge when you saw me with the backhoe? No. I didn't remember that. that time too. How, how much water was by the bridge? It was halfway across the road. All right, it's a foot deep now over the road. How deep Where? was it before? It wasn't even over the road. Now it was just a little bit. Eight, I saw a eight inches bridge halfway across. Back. Rocky Road? Yeah. So I was going to add to his point, it's not just the Lamar this time. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So we were flooded in the village, and Rocky Road was just starting to go over. Yeah, I didn't. Rocky Road is higher we're now. We're not flooded down lot. here yet, and it's over up here. And I've been telling you all day that I've been watching the Gion rise, 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 rise. So now it's starting to back up. So my last check at the sewer plant was, and according to the flood people or the guys that did the map, we already know it's going to flood at five fifteen, whatever. That's when they called That's starting the, flood in our plant. Yeah. They had it in their thing. And, and so it's not just the Lamoille this time. So the paying attention to Wolcott always isn't going to save us. All right. So with Eden, Lake Eden overflowing and crossing 100 by the Boy Scout camp, that's all still going to come this way. Is it going to come this way faster? Is it staying what it is right now? That did happen in July. Yeah, but that was. It was all, it was, a lot of that was after we were flooded though, right? I can't. If I remember yeah, correctly, that, that was, time frame. that was just something to think about. But I, yeah. I agree that, you know, the BT alerts is probably the best way this time for one. I would just, everybody's been high on alert today. Yeah. Everyone. I went down the river road west and talked to Allison and everybody on that road's right here. I went down there too. They were all watching out the windows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say this I have called or texted all my renters, and a lot of them are new renters from after the flood. They've just moved in. They do not work in town. They work out of town. They rolled in tonight. I said, when you go to bed, park your car somewhere else. And, they, and so they're all aware of that because a lot of my renters, you know, they're new to town. They, they weren't here when the, when the flood had last time. And if I hadn't texted them, they wouldn't know that they actually are living in a potential area that could flood. Then they moved from another state. <laughs> some, of them, some of them have just left home. Okay, so... RJ's got a question. That's something. Go ahead, RJ. We have a list at the station of the high hazard areas, the, the reoccurrence. If you would like a notification to be made, we, I think we could cover that in about a two hour period with the fire department and or some things that Jason and crew might have already done. But about a two hours worth of work, we can probably cover geographically our high hazard areas. Um, if you decide to do that, I strongly recommend that we predetermine the statements that those people are going to have. Uh, you know, it's an, in my opinion, it's all about awareness, uh, not trying to take action, not leaning towards opening a shelter, just awareness. Uh, I would strongly suggest that we, uh, if we tell them we are expecting 15 and a half feet, we follow that up with a second pair, a second sentence that says, you know, in comparison, the July 2023 flood was X, just so somebody can create a visual in their head. Um, and secondly, if you decide to do that, or if you direct us to do that, is that time something that we will be able to submit as a reimbursement for the utility? Because it is not a traditional 911 call. Right. And we talked about that since the last event, too. Right. I just want to be um, clear about that so that nobody has any false expectations after the fact. Yeah. I agree with everything that RJ just said, and I mean, you know, assuming that it could potentially uh, be reimbursable if it uh, were to do any, if there were to be any damage, you know, I, I think that's something that would be worth the expense. Even if it's not reimbursable, it's worth the expense. Like Brian said, if, if one person doesn't know that this is coming and is warned, 
and it will be worth the expense. And just to follow up with that, when you guys are predicting model, you're looking at a set amount. There's locations that can't go off that amount. Like our location right at the two rivers, where I was higher than what the prediction is. Everything below the gauges. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe that, like RJ said, those I'd be happy with like those high risk areas uh, that pretty much always flood just have an advance notice. Well, I hear both sides of it. Um, have you guys looked behind the library recently? You see this guy was coming up. Gary, it's over. It's up to the library parking lot. It is up to the parking lot. Yeah, we're gonna head down there in a minute. Could I make one request that we save the RFP for the library and the rest of the building? We'll check it for another next. We're just gonna approve moving forward. All we were going to try and do would, was uh, authorize the chair and the town administrator to issue it so we can get it out the door. Because, you know, that needs to be, in my opinion, that needs to be done sooner or yeah. later. I don't want to keep postponing it. Well, could just open their shelter. Um, and to the point of shelter, by the way, here... Um, we're set up to open the shelter. We it is not open currently, but we will open it if we need to. So we have a space to do it, and the Red Cross has been put on alert that we may open the shelter. And so has the United Way. Is if we're going to go out and knock on doors, we need to have it open because if somebody says, "Well, I don't want to leave," we need a place to grab. Yeah, and if we don't have it open, they say, where am I going to go? Correct. So do we meet in the middle? Anybody? Make a call. If you're the EMT, make the call. That's quite a call. I would suggest to you that we follow RJ's suggestion and do the known problem areas and RJ's initial conversation also discussed sheltering in place and hearing that respecting it and hearing um, I'm drawing a blank here Craig. Craig I'm sorry Craig I know your name too <laughs> hearing your concern about needing a shelter open if you're going to do that Makes sense. I think I think we should be really cautious about making any representations like we know what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. Because we really don't. I mean, yeah. you know, the water could go up like a rocket, or it could come back down again. If we, you know, to your point, RJ, I understand what you're saying, but if we even say that, you know. The peak in July was 21 feet, and now it's expected to be 15 and a half, and it goes to 20. You know, we've, we've automatically set ourselves up for putting one piece of information out there that people relied on. Um, I, I, I just I think that's not that. a good idea. I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I think that we should, that I think POC should predetermine what the statement is so that no matter who knocks on what door, Everybody in the community gets the same piece of information. And if there's a pamphlet or something that goes along with it and you have preferred methods for somebody to try to follow up, just make those suggestions all be on there. But I think this, the, whatever, if we're gonna distribute something, I think EOC should tell us what you want to be heard out there. Like my version and Craig's version and the youngest firefighter's version would all be different. So. Right. Determine your statement, and then we go out there, and we're all on a level playing field in terms of what was distributed at eight o'clock tonight. You know, and I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. We're going to tell people what it's going to go. I'm looking at it as education. Like this is what is being said. Like you said, at this point in time, and that way they're at least understanding that. And maybe on that piece of paper, or whatever. You can stay updated at weather.gov or something, you know. Um, yeah, monitor. Yeah. You know, monitor so they, the situation. Gives them that, the resource. Yeah. So our, our known information 
is that there'll be a flooding event in Johnson. Right. Uh, well, I'm just saying no information. But there'll be a flooding event in Johnson, and that you need to stay up to date with what's going on, which most likely everybody is. Well, something got up. Yeah. So, I, 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 wait, I wait, really wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me just say. Yeah. If we made a statement like river levels are rising and we are currently already flooding, please take precautions. Um, do what's best for you and your family. If you are seeking shelter, please call this number and give the town office number, which will ring to emergency whichever rate. phone, the emergency phone. Um, Who's going to carry that phone? I gave it to you. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, if this tracks up, I will be so busy with calls from the state and other resources, I won't be able to carry another phone. Figure it out, good. So, so we have a YouTube person, uh, Carrie. Uh, what is the best, most accurate way to know road closures? In Johnson? Yeah. Johnson road closures would be the town website, town Facebook page. State highways would be agency of transportation. Um, okay. So. Beth, I would also, sorry, add to that, um, like BJ said, uh, direct them to somewhere that they can find updated information. Um, you know, we give them the most up-to-date information that we have, and then we say, if you want to stay on top of it, here's where you go. Um, yeah. In an effort to not hold everybody up. So we're already losing people. Um, what do we need? Authorization to spend up to X dollars on early notification if C fit? We already authorized it. I guess. For an open, open blanket, open book. So we could <laughs> spend, spend. We're spend, done with the flood blanket. aspect of yeah, it. We, we just need to decide if we're going <clears> to <throat> ask anyone for anything before they leave. That's it. So, sorry, I'm sorry. Are we are going to notify? Is that correct? I don't know. Evan? I would rather confer a little bit more. Um, I will probably call Eric Osgood again and ask his thoughts because he's dealt with a lot of flood events. As, as the fire department, I know they're all different. I'd like to get a, another expert's opinion. If everybody's okay with that. If he recommends it, there'll be a request understanding that the, the town through EOC will be invoiced for your time. And Craig, you are right. It was a scheduling conflict for me. I could not be here at 5 and I am sorry about that. That was the request and I did hear it. Regardless of what happens with notifications, we can do VT alerts regularly and yes. should. And we'll update the town website here. I'm already updated yeah. to the town That's website every time I have an update. Yeah. It's pretty done and regular. Wonderful. And can you get the paper ready? Yep. Just in case it's you written out. It, it'll be ready? Yep. Yeah. I'll get it printed at home. I can do it faster. Yeah. Okay. And we're talking just the high probability areas, right? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for flood for the moment. So RJ, I think that Evan will likely be in touch shortly. Uh, you're welcome to stay for the rest of this, but it'll be about five minutes, I think. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Brian, you can head. Okay. You're I not going to update you guys on the library just the plan. I talked to the board and Jean. We're just going to do sandbags up to the bottom of the basement windows. And that's kind of what happened for the uh, fake or Halloween flood. We're able to keep it dry. It goes above that. We're out. Yeah. Makes sense to me. And I bought uh, a new sump pump. I bought that new sump pump because we had not. Yeah. Okay, we'll put that in right now. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
RFP for the, I would actually propose the I'm not the person and that somebody else be the person. If you're willing. Um, I, I, I would be more than happy to have Tom do it, but if Tom and I could review it before it gets sent out, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Perfect. Okay, so RFP Municipal Building and Library, would someone like to make a motion? I will make a motion to authorize uh, Duncan and Tom to review the RFP for the Municipal and Library um, and for Tom to sign it. A motion, do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Would you rather Duncan sign it or Tom sign it? Tom I thought that was what the other one was. Either or. I don't, yeah, I don't care. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I have a question. Does anybody, I know I had a couple of relatively small comments. If anybody has any specific comments on the RP, get them to Tom and I. So we can incorporate those into the into the final document as well. Cool. Sounds and good. did you vote? Aye. <coughs> I was not. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, unless there's any other business, meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thank you all.